Hello, this is Angel Lee with today's wisdom. Today's wisdom comes from Daily Own, the strength of compassion, coming at conflict with an open heart. Um, and there are some people who don't like to do that. They enjoy their conflict. And uh, I don't like people like that. Uh, and I don't enjoy conflict. So to me, this is a good lesson that people can learn. Conflict is an unavoidable part of our lives because our beliefs and modes of being often contrast powerfully with those of our loved ones, acquaintances, and associates. Um, especially here recently in the USA because of the polarizing political scene. Yet for all the grief disagreements can cause, we can learn much from them. Uh, because like I tell my kids when they fuss about people, I'm like, just listen to them, see what they're saying, think about it, see if there's any you know, validity or point made about it. Because even a broken clock is right twice a day. The manner in which we handle ourselves when confronted with anger or argument demonstrates our overall level of patience and the quality of our energetic states. So, I am a patient person. I've been told I have the patience of a saint. Uh, which isn't always good. But, <laughs> um... I know people who are just really impatient and they just have no patience or just blah, 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 blah. and I was like oh why why be like that because you know I don't understand because I'm not like that so you know um, but if like I say if you're ba if your baseline is basically happy you're gonna stay in that room if your baseline is basically unhappy you're going to stay in that mode. So, you know, uh, that's if we don't train ourselves to rethink and rebehave. To resolve conflict, no matter how exasperating the disagreement at hand, we should approach our adversary with an open heart, laden with compassion. Because everyone's experiences makes them how they are. So if you come across a really miserable person, the chances are they've had a miserable life. Um, and that's what made them miserable. And that's why they're trying to make you miserable, because the old saying, misery loves company. <laughs> Judgments and blame can be cast aside and replaced with mutual respect. Um, and I've told people this before, I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree. <laughs> because I believe what I believe. And if you, what you believe is different from what I believe, um... That's an impasse because from my experience and my point of view, this is how it is. But from your experience and your point of view, that might be how it is. So, you know, um, neither one of us may be wrong. It just may be how that our reality is for us. So, you know, you have to be able to say, we're going to have to disagree, agree to disagree on that. <laughs> <clears throat> conflict is frequently motivated by unspoken needs that are masked by confrontational attitudes or aggressive behavior um, and if you listen to my podcast at all you've heard me talk about adult children um, there are a lot of adult children walking around in the world because their needs you know uh, mentally and emotionally the child were never met their parents did not do that for them they don't know how haven't learned how to do that for themselves so they're out in the world being adult children and that usually spills off onto the rest of us so you know um when people come at you with confrontational attitudes it's usually because they actually are wanting something from you it might be your love your respect whatever um that they feel like you're not giving them that they want from you um and it's all about them it's not about you so you know when people are doing that to you you realize it's about them uh, and when people come at you aggressively which I mean to me that's the biggest turnoff in the world you know um, I've been in workplaces and met aggressive men and women um, and it's like you know what I don't want to work with you anymore because you behave like this um, one of the uh, social workers at uh, one of my former workplaces uh, we had a panic button I my hand went to it he was being so aggressive with me I almost pushed the button but our boss came out and said, hey, excuse me, come here. Um, and had a little talk with him. Um, and then he calmed down and apologized. 
so, I mean, there's never any reason for that. When someone comes at you in an aggressive manner, there's never any reason for that. And that's usually from their lacking. Um, or the fact that they may even be unsure about their point. Uh, because usually if people are, you know, unsure about themselves, they'll defend themselves. When we come at conflict with love and acceptance in our hearts, we empower ourselves to discover a means to attaining collective resolution. Um, and that's the goal there, is collective resolution. It, it, it's resolved for you, it's resolved for me. Um, and with a lot of people, they don't know even what they want. So it's hard to resolve something. And these are the people who might be your lifelong enemies or frenemies because they really don't know what they want, um, but somehow you trigger them. <laughs> so, you know, uh, sometimes it's not possible, but it, it should be a goal for you to try and make it possible, to try to resolve the situation to both parties' satisfaction. The key to finding the wisdom concealed in a conflict is to ask yourself why you clash with a particular person or situation. Um, and that's hard for some people. They don't want to look into that. that. That's scary. They don't want to do that. But if you can do that and take a step back and think about that. Why does this bug me? Because let's face the facts. You shouldn't be all up in anybody's business enough that their behavior bugs you. You know, <laughs> in all honesty, you should be minding your own. <laughs> if you're minding your own business, you can't be worried about their business, right? Uh, unless it's your job to worry about their business. Um, but you know, uh, think about that. Why does this bug me? Um, and if it's a simple answer, it's like it goes against your beliefs or whatever, then you can pray for that person. You know, that'll do more good than you me, 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 me on on that person. Because they're not going to listen to you, especially if their opinion's different. Uh, so think about why this bugs you. Because you probably will find out it's got a little more to do with your internal workings than theirs. Unless they're just a really horrible person. Your inner self or the universe may be trying to point you to a specific life lesson. So try to keep your ears and eyes open. And it's like I tell the kids again, uh, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So, you know, if something keeps coming up for you, you might want to pay attention to that. It's like, why is this coming up? Excuse me, why is this bugging me? Once you have explored the internal and external roots of your disagreement, make a conscious effort to release any anger or resentment you feel. I mean, that's really hard for some people to let go of anger because some people thrive on anger and resentment and, you know, they're stressful little people and they love it. Um, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't deal with that because it's like life is too short to be all stressed out and resentful of people. You know, I learned probably in my... Um, late 30s early 40s to heck with other people <laughs> that doesn't sound right but you need to worry about you because you need to be okay in order to try and do anything for anybody else um if you're letting other people in uh and uh letting them mess you up then you've like, given them power you've given them power over your life and not yourself you need to take your power back and say i'm in charge i'm not gonna let them get in and bug me um and like i said if something's so bad you feel like you need to speak your piece speak your piece and then move on you know don't keep on beating the proverbial dead horse as they say <clears throat> as you do so the energy between you and your adversary will change will change perceptibly even if they are still operating from a more limited energy state um, and that is the case in a lot of things. You have one person at this level of consciousness and one person at this level of consciousness. They can't see where you are because they haven't been there yet. And they see where you are and they're trying to help you come, but you might not be ready to come to that point yet. So, you know, there's a lot of that. People on different levels um, of consciousness and that causes some problems too. Consider that each of you likely has compelling reasons for thinking and feeling as you do and accept that you have no power to change your adversary's mind because you can't. You can't change someone else's mind. 
as the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Same thing. You can teach someone to show some something, something all day long, but unless they open their mind and their heart and decide where they're going to look at this, um, you can't change their mind. This can help you approach your disagreement rationally with a steady voice and a willingness to compromise. And usually, uh, especially in relationships, uh, that is needed in disagreements uh, because everyone's different, everyone came up differently, everyone has a different point of view, different, you know, unique way of being. Um, and there are things my husband does that drives me nuts um, and he thinks, you know, the way I raised was too nitpicky. but you know, compared to some other people, wasn't nitpicky enough. So, <laughs> you know, uh, we have had to compromise on the way things are done and what's acceptable and what's not because we had very different upbringings. He was raised by people who were very uh, permissive um, and my family was more authoritarian. So, <laughs> you know, there's some differences there. If you listen thoughtfully and with an empathetic ear during conflict, you can transform clashes into opportunities to compromise. Um, so again, listen carefully, because you and everybody else probably have more in common. We're all human beings in the same boat, living the human experience. Uh, we all have more in common with each other um, than we have uh, different from each other. Excuse me here. Something feels like it's tickling me. We got, like I said, it's been hot here for three weeks. You know, today we got a break. <laughs> but, you know, three weeks we've been on fire over here. Um, and, of course, the bugs love that. So, you know, mosquitoes, gnats, flies, they're, just, they're having a field day out there. And every time somebody opens the door, it seems like something, you know, comes on in. Oh, I'm going to come on in. It's like, we didn't invite you. Go away. But, uh, <laughs> you know, this is, so if you see me itching. I feel like something's crawling on me, you know. <laughs> I'm allergic to bugs. Uh, examine your thoughts and feelings carefully. And a lot of people don't like to do that. They don't want to think about their thoughts and feelings. They run headlong through the world trying to not think about their thoughts and feelings. Because that might be too scary for them. You may discover stubbornness within yourself that is causing resistance or that you are unwittingly feeding yourself negative messages about your adversary so all of us are stubborn about one thing or another but some people uh make it an art <laughs> you know uh so uh uh you know if if you're resisting making peace with another person be honest with yourself and then figure out why that is what's the big deal and uh you know if you're feeding yourself negative message all the time about this other person that's what you're going to believe because what you tell yourself is what you believe. As your part in disagreements becomes gradually more clear, each new conflict becomes another chance to further hone your empathy, compassion, and tolerance. And that's what we need for each other, empathy. If you can put yourself in the other guy's shoes and feel how they feel, then that'll take you towards, you know, understanding people a little better. Um, and compassion. You know, some people have had not had the easiest best life ever so if you can have compassion for this person say well you know i understand a little bit about why they are the way they are but you know maybe we'll talk it out um and then again tolerance you have to be tolerant of others because it's a great big world with all kinds of others <laughs> in it <laughs> you know uh so you know um if you're wanting to come at a conflict with an open heart um you need to have the strength of compassion. Think about it. Uh, please like and share this wisdom so we can spread it around the world. Um, if you want to help me out, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. If you want to help me out even more, go to my Patreon page and become a patron. That's all for now. Until next time.